Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to receive your word and to receive of your spirit tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Tonight, I am sharing with you about anointed men. How many want to be anointed? How many are too sleepy to be anointed? Are you sure? I've already seen some sleepy heads. All right. Now, 1 Kings chapter um, 17. Now, Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the settlers of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord God liveth before whom I stand, surely there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go away from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. Amen. Are you there? Are you there? Very good. Now, one of the things, um, one of the things that uh, you will find out about anointed people is that there are many mysterious things about them. Amen. Now, recently, somebody sent me a message, and he said to me something that I was a bit surprised that he said. Do you want to know what he said? He said to me, you can teach people about the anointing, but they will not be anointed because they don't know something about you. He said, no matter how much you teach them and no matter what you show them, they will still not be anointed because there is something that they don't have or they don't know. And unless they know it and they have it, they may know what to hear about the anointing, but they will never be anointed. Do you want to know what he was talking about? I'm not going to tell you. But I was a bit surprised that he was able to to know that, which is also something that I think is very true. That is why a lot of people are taught about the anointing, but they never become anointed. The other day I was watching Benny Hinn teaching people about the anointing, and I was just wondering, wow, how many of these people are going to be anointed? Huh? But may God open your eyes. How many are going to walk in the anointing? So, in 1 Kings chapter 17, we see the arrival of Elijah. Now, that's the first thing you see. Now, Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the settlers of Gilead, said to Ahab, we don't know anything about Elijah. We don't know how he came to be a prophet. We don't know why he was a prophet. We don't know who he followed to become a prophet. We don't know where he trained, who trained him, how he became such a great prophet. Do you understand? So mysterious. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And with some people too, you may know how they became prophets, like Elisha, but you still cannot catch his anointing, what he caught. And if you look at the story of Elisha, turn to 1 Kings chapter 19. All right. That's 1 Kings 19, 19. So he departed there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, while he was plowing with 12 pairs of oxen before him, and he with the 12. And Elijah passed over him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, then I will follow you. 
And he said to him, go back. For what have I done to you? So he returned from following him, took the prayer of oxen, sacrificed them, boiled their flesh with the implements of the oxen, gave it to the people, and they ate. And he arose and followed Elijah and ministered to him. Right? Now, here again, Elijah's ministry spans from 1 Kings 17, 18, and 19. That's the, all of Elijah. From 20, he's changing the meter band. And actually, another prophet comes on the scene who actually seems to help Ahab. We understand. Until Elijah reappears in 2 Kings. Are you with me? Yeah. And that is just to round up the life of Ahab and then to finish things. Do you understand? Anyway, so um, you find out that uh, Elisha came on the scene after all the great works of Elijah. So he, he was not there to see. So Elijah was even more mystical to him. No tapes, no videos, no books. You understand? Just Elisha after he has done all the great works. Do you get it? And now you are here and you follow the person. So it looks like you don't even have to be there to see and to know, to catch any anointing. Do you understand? It's so mysterious. And why did they follow Jesus. Why did they follow Elijah? Why did he follow? What was he doing? Do you see? And one of the things that I believe, which I, I, I still don't even want to really share, and so I'll just share because I don't know how spiritual you are and whether you really want such things. But one of the things is that God wants you to see something. Do you see? He wants you to see things. But unfortunately, we don't see you get it? So, God wants your eyes to be open so that you can see. Because you can be around for a long time, but you can't see. You don't see and you don't understand. But may God open your eyes to see things that you can see. Now, remember when Elijah, Elisha asked Elijah, can I have the spirit that is on you. Elijah said, if you see me when I'm taken, then you have. In other words, if you see, if you see, you will. But if not, you have followed me in vain. You have been in the church for nothing. You've been around for a long time, but you never saw. Are you there? Now, the reason why people do not receive the anointing is because they don't see. Turn to John 14. Now, I don't hope you didn't come for a good Bible teaching. Are you there? How many want the anointing? I'm talking about anointed men. Please, if you don't want the anointing, do not come to this service. I've told you, it's not for immature people. And it's not for people who are just interested in playing games in the church for a long time. It's for people who are looking for something. How many are looking for something? If you know you are not looking for something, don't come. Even if they put you in a bus, don't come. John 14. Verse 16. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is, that is the spirit of truth. Whom, now what is the spirit? What is the spirit? The anointing. What is anointing? Anointing is the spirit. Okay? Anointing is the spirit. Alright? Now, what does the Bible say in verse 17? Whom the world 
cannot receive. They cannot receive anointing. Why? Why can the world not receive anointing? Because it does not see him or know him. <laughs> or the King James says, God is seeth him not, neither knoweth him. And that's why the world cannot receive. They, they can't receive. Because they can't see the spirit. They see the money. They see the cars. They see the height. Oh, the man is tall. They see the man is handsome. Or the man is ugly. But they don't see the spirit. Whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. So when you see somebody, instead of seeing the anointing, you are seeing different things. I read a book once about John Wesley. Instead of the people to see that there was a certain anointing and grace, they were rather seeing that he likes girls. <laughs> and when you read the book, it's an, unfortunate, it's an unfortunate impression that you get from the author. Others have different kind of opinion. You see, and that is why people never receive the spirit. It says, and uh, the, my father will send you a helper. Now, what is that helper? Everybody who does something with God has a, a supernatural and invisible helper. You see, one day I was preaching. One day I was preaching, and there was somebody sitting up where this uh, person was sitting, breastfeeding actually. And suddenly her eyes opened, and she saw an angel there. And that, that, during that service, I was saying, I see the Lord blessing you. I see God giving you an anointing. And as I was saying these words, the angel would throw a parcel into the congregation. And there were smaller angels carrying these parcels to the congregation members. And there were people who had lifted their hand. The angel would just come and put their hand like that. Different things. So this girl did not even tell me. She told her husband. So the next day I was preaching. Their husband had been quiet the day. I didn't even see him. But that next day I was preaching, I see whatever. And I saw the guy jumping up to heaven, lifting up his hand. Just receiving this, receiving this, receiving this. Ah. So, I didn't know. That was the second day. That was the second day. And the, third, the first day he could not see. But some people could see and they were catching. So it was after then she told me what she has seen. I said, that explains your husband's revival. <laughs> there, there are some people who are professional sleepers in every church. Even this morning, I went to a church. I saw one of the sleepers there. I never said anything about it, but I saw that this is a professional sleeper. Whatever I say, he sleeps. At the beginning of the service, sleeping. At the end of the service, sleeping. When we are having a small discussion, he's sleeping. These type of people, they don't, cannot receive the spirit. Because they cannot see. Whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him. It is people who can see the spirit. Who can receive. But unfortunately, people are around somebody who has the spirit, but they never see the spirit around the person. And that is why Elijah, Elisha asked Elijah, I said, I want double portion of the spirit. That's why, because he could see the spirit. They had seen it. And so he was becoming more capable of receiving. And instead of seeing things, what you should see, you are seeing wrong things. You see, like one day somebody came and asked me, have you seen that lady? I said, which one? So the one with the long hair. Who had this? I said, I didn't see the hair. Because you see, a man doesn't often see hair. Well, at least I don't often look at it. These days, even because of my wife and wife. And especially from that day when the person said, the one with the hair, I realized that women identify themselves by their hairstyle. They have a way of identifying themselves. Uh, the one whose hair is this, and the one who has the uh, uh, hair pieces, and the one who has a rasta, or the one who has this, or the one who has that. So you see that 
their eyes are open to see hair dresses shoot one day my wife went to buy something i said this particular thing i don't like it at all it's not nice to me she said hey this is what people find i said what is it called it's called lace I said lace it's not nice to me at all <laughs> but it is nice to some people <laughs> and he said that they have expensive one this type this this that said, when you wear it then it means you have really I mean arrives <laughs> so I didn't even know so something somebody has won he thinks that he has won a very expensive I don't I I rather think that it's a low cost something that is not good at all when you wear it it's not nice at all I don't like my wife to wear such things So you see, we are all seeing different things. Oh. We are all in the church seeing different things. Somebody is looking to see whether the man is chatting with his wife. Oh, I like the way he chats with his wife. Instead of seeing anointing, you are looking at the way he is chatting with his wife. Whom the world cannot receive because he seeth him not. He's there. They don't see him. They are seeing other things. Thinking about the wrong things. That's the reality. We are all here things, seeing different things. How many times I've gone to preach at places when they are coming to see me, or I can see they are coming to see my car. They're coming to see my car. What has my car got to do with me? That's why these days when I'm going, I borrow cars. I say, let's go. I even forgot to. I should have gone with somebody's car. You go preaching. Different, different cars. My car, you shouldn't think of my car. Because my car is one of the most misleading things about me. I drive the same car as my staff. My car is a second-hand car, which is with a broken windscreen from the day it came up to today, is still broken. And our church can buy Mercedes-Benz in colors. For me, if you are going to follow car, you may not know the realities. Do you know how much one crusade costs us? One crusade costs us more than $20,000 for us to go and come. You think you cannot buy a car? And we are having two crusades every month. Sit there and be looking at cars. I say sit there and be looking at cars. You are looking at wrong things. I said, you are looking at wrong things. Don't look at that. You can't see. You can't be anointed. Hey. That is the single greatest reason why. Because what your eyes are on is what you'll be heading for. Yeah, what your eyes are on is what you'll be heading for. What your eyes are on something. Mm. I was talking to one pastor. He said to me, he was talking about one pastor. He said, this particular pastor is very anointed. Very, very anointed. And I said, you have, your eyes have been open to see. And sometimes with the different people that I relate with, I realize they all see different things. Everybody sees something else. And that's why People are not able. You, you see what you receive. Some people see me as a good leader. And allow me to speak. I'm going to speak for two minutes as a fool. After that, forget what I said. I am a good leader. I have led a little group from a little corner to a worldwide church in more than 40 countries. We spend millions of dollars, if you don't know what I'm telling you, and we don't owe anybody. So in terms of leadership, and I employ a lot of people in different countries. Do you employ anybody? Are you employed? Mm -hmm. So you are not employed before you employ. You understand? And before you employ in your locality. Forget about what I said. But what I'm trying to say is that some people look at me as a good leader. And they say, oh, he has leadership qualities. Strategies. But you see, as for David... King David, he saw everything that he did in terms of the anointing. 
He said, the Lord will save his anointed. He said, the Lord shows his loving kindness to his anointed. He said, the Lord will strengthen his anointed. It's just because he's anointed. He sees everything that is happening just because of that one thing that he was watching some sheep. They came and called him and they poured the oil on him. From the day they poured the oil, as far as he's concerned, everything about him is because, through, by, in that anointing he always referred to himself as the anointed one time people were trying to challenge him he said why do the hidden rage and why do the people imagine a vain thing against the lord's anointed somebody who god has poured oil upon why why are people planning things why leadership administration of israel war strategies this and that and that no 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 he said well, the lord has strengthened oh one day i'm going to teach you about the anointings in the psalms anointings of psalms and you will see that the man saw he just loved everything was because of the presence of an anointing. and you see that's what he saw because he could see that the only thing that has happened in his life is that somebody came he was in the field. Somebody came and the person poured all. He became a king. Because of that oil that was poured. Every circumstance that worked, he saw it as because he, of the anointing. He said, the Lord's anointed. The Lord shall save his anointed. The Lord shall strengthen his anointed. He shall anoint me with fresh oil. He saw it all as because of the anointing. Thou anointest my head. Us, my cup runneth over. Surely, it must be because of the anointing. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Us. He, he felt it was a... So, he could just see the anointing. But you see, we come to church. And we say, we say, half cast. We say, if you are half cast, you can attract some white and some blacks. You have seen the wrong thing again. You've gone down the wrong road. Ah, he's a doctor. You saw the wrong thing again. He been to school. You saw the wrong thing again. Try to see the right thing. And when you see the right thing, eh, all those other things, you will realize that perhaps the Lord anointed me even from my mother's womb that's why i became a doctor that actually being a doctor is because of an anointing that was upon not that i am a doctor that is why the ministry is working but because of the lord's anointing i was able to do well something i didn't want to do i did it something i didn't want to pass i passed even when i was failing the lord took me up and he put me upon on top there something i was not interested in yeah then you begin to see that the thing is because of the anointing. That because of the anointing that I'm not yet dead. Because something should have killed me a long time ago, but I'm still around. When you see, then you realize that all things are really because... What is the anointing? What, what is the spirit? I just want you to see something. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians. What is this anointing? What is the Spirit? What is the Holy Spirit? What is it? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15. But to this day, whenever Moses is read, the veil lies over their heart. Mercy. They cannot see. But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. When you turn to God truly, the veil will be taken away. Now, Verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. It says, now the Lord is that spirit. So the spirit or that anointing is actually the Lord. It's God himself who has come to be with you. So that's why I said, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a veil? Why? What, what, what are they, why are they planning against the Lord's anointed somebody who has been anointed. 
Why? Oh, may you have, I tell you, may, may God's anointing be upon you. Yeah. May God's anointing be upon you. May God's anointing be upon you. Because through that anointing, said the Lord is that spirit. Joshua, when he was going to fight in the battle, the day before, he was walking in the camp. Then he saw a big soldier armed with gleaming armor. And he drew his sword and said, who are you? Are you with, well, of course, he doesn't know all the thousands of people. He said, who are you? Where do you belong? He said, I am the captain of the Lord's host. And I have come to fight and to deliver on behalf of the Lord. Remove your, your, your shoes right now. And he immediately removed his shoes because he saw that there was a power that had come to fight with him and for him. So the next morning, when Joshua went out there to fight, when he does like this, bah, then the captain of the, the invisible soldier, he will also do. Ka, 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 ka. So then Joshua looked very powerful. It looked as though he had good leadership strategies. Because when he told the people to go from the left, the invisible soldier he goes to the left side and then he knocks the people ka, 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 ka. so after when they come back and they sit down then Joshua wants to write a book about strategies strategies of warfare or principles of effective battle strategies it's just funny it's just funny because it is the captain of the Lord's host when you strike like this, then he also does. Da, 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 da. When you move from the, it is him. He is the one. And that is why David saw everything from the anointing point of view. He saw the Lord is that spirit. So when you say somebody has been anointed, it means that the Lord is with the person in a certain way. Yeah. No matter what, even when the person is weak and the person is failing, God will lift the person up. Yeah, that is why anointed people have obvious weaknesses. But because God is with them, in spite of their obvious weaknesses, you see them triumphing. That's why you see David lament. They say, they planned this against me. They did this. And then my people turned against me. He that lifted his heel against me. And they did this. Oh Lord, where are you? But how can they do this against your anointed? Lord, you shall save your anointed. You shall show your loving kindness to your anointed. He knew that because he was anointed. God will save him. God's anointed person is anointed and God is with the person, not because of the, in spite of the person. He is with you. He is with you. May he be with you. Amen. Sit down, sit down. But you see, why don't we see? Do you know why we don't see? Because we don't love. We don't see because we don't love. You see, the, the reason why we don't get anointed is because we don't see anointing. And the reason why we don't see anointing is because we don't love. I, I want to finish very quickly. Turn to Ephesians chapter 3. Chapter 3. All right, are you there? Now, he says... For whom the family on heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. Amen? Amen. Verse 17. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And that you, notice, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to compre comprehend with all the saints what is their breadth and length and height and depth. Mm. Listen. Listen. Look at me. Look at me, everybody. You can't understand it because when you read it, you've not understood up to now. So listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying that it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you, when you are rooted and grounded in love, that means that when you are full of love, 
when you are you really love both God, his anointed, whatever it is that you love, his anointed, you now begin to see the length and the depth and the breadth and the, in other words, you begin to see things you didn't see. Things you didn't see. Length, breadth. Like women, when you see yourselves, you know you are size 12, you are size 10, you are size 8, you are size 14. You see. You see, but you don't know. At all. Yes, you don't At know. All. At all. Because you are not in love with clothes. All right. And maybe women. Mm. You see, if you are a man and you are always seen, this person is size 100, size 50, 400, size 28. And so it's not a good thing. You shouldn't see women and assess them in that way. It's not, a, it's not healthy. You should just see them as sisters, but not as a, this is a size 12 sister. Or this, this is a size 15 sister. Hey. The size 18 sister. <laughs> Do you understand my message? Why, oh, why superfly? But as soon as you are rooted and grounded in love, you begin to see the length, the depth, the breadth, the height. So when you love, you see more things. When you love, when you are rooted in love, you see. Because I love Benny Hinn, I see more things than I can give you. You can't. You will sleep even. And and, and that's what even makes people sleep: lack of interest. And some people, to cover their sleep, they shout a lot, whilst they are awake, and then they fall asleep. I went somewhere to preach one time, and when I was preaching. This fellow was sleeping. So when I was sitting down, I noticed that this fellow was shouting. So I thought, no, the location of the shout is the same location of the sleeper. So I tend to see if it was the same location, the same sleeper who was shouting. And lo and behold, the sleeper was the shouter. When it comes to serious revelation, then you say, When it comes to see the, the, the length and the depth and the breadth. The, the when you start to talk about NPP or NDC. Because you are an airway, certain vibrations rise in you when we start to talk about certain political parties. And, but when we're talking about the length and depth and the breath, you begin to get a- epilepsy. Petit mal epilepsy. Yes. Your tribal instincts are raised up. Your national instincts are raised up. When it comes to soccer. I don't know the name of any, apart from Asian, I don't know any player in our team. Because I don't love soccer. I don't love soccer at all. I have no interest in soccer. I'm not a soccer fan. I just know that Ghana is going. And I've watched some of these soccer things before and I I realized that (laughs) I didn't enjoy it. So I don't like it. Yeah. I don't enjoy it. And also Ghana... Ghana Black Stars, when we score one, then we relax. Then they put pressure on us and they score one, one, two, one, three, one. I don't want those things. I've, I've, I've got a lot of problems that I'm thinking about. I cannot add. When it is over, you tell me the scores. If we won, then I watch. Or when I'm in the house and I hear, go, go, then I go and put on the television. I know that. Because something good is happening. <laughs> Today we won, eh? Against who? Korea. Maybe they allow them to score. Yeah. I mean, all I'm trying to say is, eh, we went to the church and, and then they were saying that we will not vote. You see, that's why I told you not to come in the evening. I said, come in the morning. Don't come in the evening. 
Please sack them. Sack the person. <laughs> Ask the person next. Is it you? Is it are you the the are you the foreigner? Are you the foreigner in the church? I am saying that whether NBC has a general secretary or a unilateral secretary or a private secretary, it doesn't affect me. I, I'm not interested in it. But I'm interested in if John 14 says that whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Suddenly I come alive. I'm suddenly interested in something. I've seen something that is interested in I'm interested in. I'm very interested in it. It's exciting to me. Because suddenly I can see that when I see a man of God, I, I just forget about what I'm seeing, but I can see the spirit. Then I have positioned myself to be able to receive something. And sometimes that's what takes you years and years and years to see the spirit. So that that's why you have to actually go and start a church to suffer. And for the thing not to work, then you will come and say, hey, church starting is not a small thing, oh. It seems that this man is really anointed, oh. Uh-huh. Then you begin to look back and say, hey, what is on this person that I don't have? Yeah, so that it takes a long time to see it. That's why when, when you are young, sometimes they say, we're going to say, oh, it'll not be anything. I, will, I go feed you. It will not be anything. I go feed you. So do you, do you want to preach? Oh, it will not be anything. I go feed you. I go feed start. It will not be anything. I go feed you. One brother, <laughs> he went to a church to preach. And uh, they asked him to preach. Uh, I think it was the next day or so. He said, can you preach? He said, oh, yeah. I, I can. It not be anything. I go feed you. <laughs> it not be anything. I go feed you. So when he went to the church, he had, a, he had a, a tape that he had listened to. Either prodigality, frugality, serving grace, something. He was very warm on that tape. So when he went, he said, it not be anything we go feed do. So when he got to the church, he stood there and he said, today I'm coming to share something powerful with you. And the people said, yeah. Then before he said what he, he, he was going to preach, he said, have you heard of the word prodigality or frugality? He said, oh, yes, our pastor is teaching it. <laughs> and, that, and that was his sermon that he had come with. So as he was standing there, he said, I'm going to teach you something, frugality, prodigality. Have you heard about it? Said, oh, yes. This week and last week, our pastor taught us. And he was, he almost urinated on himself. You, you don't have to, you don't have to have that mind. It no be anything we go fit to. <laughs> oh, we go fit to. William Braham, he had an angel that came to church when he came. I think probably it was the Holy Spirit, but it could also have been an angel. Because he said he shall give his angels charge to accompany you, to assist you, to fight with you. If the angel doesn't come, it doesn't do anything. And I talked to somebody who was at a service. She said she came to stand in front of him. And there was something between him and her. It was like a, an angel. Like a being. And the angel was there. I tell you. And then he just prophesied to her. And prophecy came to pass. Yeah. And if the angel doesn't come, it doesn't mean it's, You see, he could see angels. 
Catherine Kuma too, she could preach without anointing three hours. When the anointing came, she knew that the Spirit had come. That's why you, 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 somebody will say, I feel the presence of God. He said, eh, hey, me, I'm feeling hungry. You feel the presence of God. Say, me, I'm feeling tired. <laughs> the presence of God. Yeah, I'm feeling sleepy. You don't feel anything. Mercy. May you see. May you be able to see. So he said that you may know the length and depth and breadth and height. Eh? Alright? And comprehend and to know the love of Christ. You see, when you know the length and depth and breadth and height, then you begin to know the love of Christ more. You begin to see the love. I tell you, when you begin to see love, like somebody went to work with Kenneth Hagen or Kenneth Copeland, and they interviewed him, said, you work with these great men of faith. What did you learn when you worked with them closely for seven years? So I, I I didn't learn anything about faith. So what did you learn? So I learned about love. When you come, you, many of you don't see love because your eyes are not yet tuned to see love. He says that you may know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. Love is far greater than anything you know. And then you may be filled you are the one who is looking for filling with the fullness of Christ, which is the anointing. You are filled with the fullness of God. You begin to be filled. That's when the filling. And the Lord is the Spirit. So it's the anointing. You begin to be filled. I tell you, from my personal experience, I see that uh, it, when I watched Benny Hinn, recently I was watching him preaching. When he mentions Catherine Kuma, he just has a, a certain, he becomes happy. It's like you can easily say she's his girlfriend. God, for, I mean, God forbid, and all these bad words, I mean, are just not things that we should even think about. But what I'm saying is, this probably is the closest I could liken it to that he has a certain fondness for her and a certain understanding of what she says, which no, but because me, I have a book, I can't, I've not read even one page that can even enter my brain. I can't understand anything that she's saying. But Benny Hinn can understand. He said that she is his pastor. And there's nobody who can pastor him apart from Oral Roberts. And Oral Roberts is about to die. And so when he dies, the only thing he has is Catherine Kuman's state. When he needs advice or he needs revelation or refreshing, he plays her tapes because that's what ministers to him. Yeah. And he has a certain fondness. That's the best I can. And you can even, as I watch, you see, sometimes that's why video is also important. That's how what you never see it on an audio tape. You see that fondness. Because the love makes you see. And he loved her and he saw. And as he saw, he loved more. And then he became filled. But others were there. He said everybody was asleep <sighs> in the congregation. But he was. And when the anointing came, he saw, she saw that. She, she saw, she knew when the anointing came. And he would wake his guy and say, look, something's about to happen now. So he was seeing, he was loving. And as he loves, and he sees then the insides. You see, then you can see this is what's going to happen. This is what the person is doing. This is why the person is doing. Then as you see the length and depth of the breath, you love it more. Then as you love more, you begin to be filled that's why people don't get filled. They don't see, they don't love, they don't see more, and they don't love more, and they see everything else, and they don't see the anointing, and they don't see the spirit. Yeah. I, I don't want to tell you what my friends told me in the message, but what my friend told me is in the message, and I won't bother to tell you. But I tell you, that is why. Because some of us are here, we love money. We don't love God. We don't love anointing. We love our job. We want to go higher in our jobs. We love things in the world. We love praises of men. We don't love God. We don't love Christ. Why should he come and fill you with the fullness? You'll be filled with the fullness of administration. And you'll be filled with the fullness of education. 
and you'll be filled with the fullness of letters, and you'll be filled with the fullness of worldly praises. You'll be filled with the fullness of praises and accolades from human bosses. You'll be filled with the fullness of promotion on this earth. That's what you'll be filled with, but not with the fullness of Christ and his power, because that's not what you love. You know the ins and outs of your job. What this person ends, he's on number uh, 2B. He's on level 3AC. He's on level 4. When you're on level 8, you get this. And when you're on level 7, you get this. And if you're on level 6, you can have this. So I'm now on level 3A, and I'm hoping to become level 3B by December. When I'm at level 3B, I'll move to 4A, level 4A by October next year. And by that time, I'll have a child and I'll get married. By that time, I'm moving to level 5A. When I'm at level 5A, I can get a housing loan or a car loan to be this and that. And by that time, I may be transferred to be a manager of this and that, from which I will jump to le from level 5A to level 8C. Hey! Uh, your mind, you, you know the details. Me, when I was working at Kolebo, I didn't know what I was. I didn't know where I can go. What can happen to me? I didn't know whether I, principal medical officer, chief medical officer, director of medical services. I didn't know what, it, what, was, what was there. All I was counting was the number of leave days in the year. 28 working days. How to arrange the working day leave to coincide with Easter, Christmas, and others so that the 28 becomes very long. That's all I knew. How to calculate leave. How to calculate to get away, to free myself. Mercy. I finished preaching. But I'll show you something from Songs of Solomon. How many want some love from the songs? Do you enjoy the songs of Solomon? Wow. We were in chapter 6, I believe, the last time. All right. Now, you see, when you, are, when you love, you, you begin to see in verse 4, 6, 4, you are beautiful as Tisa, my darling, as lovely as Jerusalem. As awesome as an army with banners. Turn your eyes away from me, for they have confused me. You see, you, you are staring at the anointed. Are you understand? You are staring at the anointed. The anointed is even embarrassed. I'll show you that in Elijah and Elisha. Yeah. When one time when Elisha became embarrassed. Okay. Are you there? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Six. Your teeth are like a flock of eels. How do you see the teeth? Because you are looking at the length and depth and breadth. You understand? Love makes you see more things that others cannot see. And it makes you see good things. All the things here are good. It doesn't say that your teeth are what? What did he say your teeth are? It didn't say your teeth. Where is it? Six. Your three teeth are like a flock of eels. Eels are white sheep. It didn't say your teeth are yellow, uh, whatever, yellow <laughs> gravels, yellow gravels that are in your mouth, or your teeth are like spears, or your teeth are like rabbits, or your teeth are like uh, whatever. No! Your teeth are like eels. He sees it good. Huh? I don't understand the message. All of which bear twins. Verse 7, your temples are like a slice of pomegranate. Well, what does yours say? That's a piece of what? Okay, whatever that is. And there, now, this is the one I want you to see. There are 60 queens and 80 concubines. Maidens and maidens without number. But my dove, my perfect one, is unique. Listen. When God makes you to see the anointing on somebody, there will be 60 queens, 60 preachers, 1,000 evangelists. But my dove, the one that God has made me love, is unique. 
as far as I'm concerned, there is nobody like this person. And that is the kind of love that God gave me for some of the people that I have followed. A certain love. Which many of us don't have. And that's why we don't see. And before we even see more and get more love. And then when the love is there, we are filled with the fullness. So it's love, see, love, fill. Love, see, love, fill. That's the progression. You love, you see, you love more. Because when you see more, it's like, ah, it's so nice. It's so nice. I like it more. Then when you love it more, you are filled with the fullness. Love, see, love, fail. What do you think? Is it powerful? 60 queens and 80 concubines and maidens without number. Some of you, you have 80, 80 preachers that you love. Now I'm talking about anointed people. 80 concubines. You love this, you love this, you love this, you love this, you love this. He said, but my dove is unique. You see, that's how marriage is supposed to be. My dove is unique. Zimbo. Zigzag. Zigiligi. If I go into certain things now, you cannot relate with it. So I will, not, I will not even bother. My dove, my perfect one is unique. She is her mother's only daughter. She is the pure child of the one who bore her. The maidens saw her and called her blessed. The queens and the concubines also, they praised her saying, Who is this that grows like the dawn? As beautiful as the full moon. You see, when you start to see this is a human being they are describing. Do you think there is a human being who is perfect? But you see that the man is enthralled. enthralled. He's enthralled with somebody who is imperfect. He's charmed. He's enchanted totally with an imperfect being and can describe all the good things. He never mentioned whether she can cook. He just said, her teeth are like this. It's true that she can't cook, but we'll not talk about that. We are talking about her teeth. And that she's a pure child of her mother. Who is this that grows like the dawn? As pure as the sun. As awesome as an army with banners. I went down to the orchard of nut trees to see the blossoms of the valley. And to see whether the vine had bothered. Before I was aware, my soul set me over the chariots of my noble people. All right? So you, sh you should, you, you see, in verse 30, come back, come back, O Shulamite, come back, come back, that we may gaze at you. Oh, that's why you love to have a cassette. You want something else that you can gaze upon. I want a video that I can look upon. Somebody that I've come close and come to love. That's why many of us don't have the, the anointing. You can be near the anointing. Judas Iscariot, do you think he loved? Do you know who was the most anointed disciple? Huh? Do you know who was the most anointed disciple? Huh? Who do you think was the most anointed disciple? Who? Why, why do you think John was the most anointed disciple? Huh? Yeah, I'm surprised you know. To me, John was the most anointed disciple. Peter had a post, but he was not the most anointed. One of the signs of God loving you is revelation and a certain closeness that he brings you. Daniel, remember when the angel came, he said, Daniel, thou art greatly beloved of the Lord. And he had all those revelations. And then John, the beloved, he said, the, the disciple whom Jesus loved, as for he there, that is his main. His whole is the book of love. And first John, the letter, love is of God. Beloved, we can see who loveth and who loveth not God. For love is of God. And whosoever loveth is born of God and knoweth God. For God is love. That which we have seen, that which we have, we have handled, that which we have looked upon. 
that which we have seen, we have looked into of the word of life. He went into it. We are presenting to you. We had a relationship. We were close. That's how can we have something to say. Yeah. Why can't you be close to a man of God who has an anointing for you? Because you have no time to gaze. Oh, Shulamite, come, come, let me gaze. Why should you see gaze at the Shulamite as at the dance of two companies? Why? Because you want to fall in love and you want to see more and fall in love again. Yes, that's the way to be anointed. Look, I didn't call you here to come and say petty things, trivial things. I came to talk about the anointing. So if you are not into such things, don't come next Sunday. This is for people who want something. 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 Thick. A thickness of the anointing. Today I went somewhere, they gave the soup was like what? I said, push it away. I want something thick. The thickness of the anointing. We are tired of clouds without rain. Oil that is like water. We want to receive something. We want to walk with something. We want to have, don't you want to have God with you? How many want God to be with you? Ash. Can't you see that you are weak? Huh? Can't you see that you are weak? Oh, mountains of Gilboa. How are the mighty fallen, mighty slain? As though they were not anointed. In other words, if the anointing was on you, you should not, you cannot fall. You see that the Bible says, unto him that is able to keep you from falling. It's the day God is tired of you and he leaves you, you fall on Friday. If he leaves you on Wednesday, you may sleep well on Thursday. By Friday, nothing will work again. Your brakes will fail. Accelerator will fail. Go to pass your snake will bite you. Everything will change. That's when you see that God is powerful. The day that he leaves you, he said, as though, as though there was no anointing. Eish. As though, as though, I said the only thing is God and his power and his anointing. When God hears certain things, it causes, one day, there is the Philistine said, God is a God of the mountains. He's not a God of the valleys. When God heard, he came down. The person he came to help was a very bad man called Ahab. This Ahab who killed Naboth, who did all these things, God came to help Ahab because he heard some people saying that he is a God of the mountains. He's not a God of the valleys. He said that, I'll show you that I'm God. I'm joining Ahab now. <laughs> so you see that Ahab's victories, anything that is working, is God has come. Anything that works, oh, is God. Bible says, what hast thou that thou didst not receive? And if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as though thou didst not receive it? I love the anointing. Thou anointest my head. My cup runneth over. Surely, surely. Surely, why will goodness follow me? Because thou anointest my head. My cup is now overflowing. And it's shaking. It's shaking. It's shaking. There is some oil in my hand. There is some oil in my life. Thou anointest my head. Oh God, anoint me. Oh God, anoint me. Oh God, pour your oil upon me. Oh God, anoint me. Oh mountains of Gilboa. Why? Why can the mighty fall at this place? As though there was never a day when an oil touched your head and your hand. How can this be? It cannot be because of the anointing. May God anoint you. 
and may he touch you. Oh, may the anointing make all the difference. Just thank God right now for that powerful anointing. Just call on God. Call on God. Call on God. Don't ask for money. Don't ask for food. Don't ask for promotion. Don't ask for things on this earth. Ask God for the anointing. God will bless you. And God will anoint you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Candolo mora manandele. Telombre samarimbes mregetos prodaledes mesinde. Tembelidos motale trequilos romondes chavaladres. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Why do you think I've been preaching about Christ? Because I want you to see the length and the depth and the breadth and the height of your Savior. I, I actually enjoy preaching about him because I benefit more than you do. Because I preach, the one who preaches is always more blessed than the people who he preaches to. That's why I preach about Christ. The more I preach about Christ, the more I find him more amazing. When I study about the words of Jesus, I see there are no words like his words. And then as I see the length and depth and breadth and height, then I, I, I begin to know the love of Christ, which passes all the knowledge I have acquired about Christ. And I love him more. Then I begin to be filled with the fullness of Christ. Ask him for love right now. We don't have love. That's what we don't have. We don't have that love. Lord, touch my heart to love you. To love those you have anointed. To love those you have sent to my life. To love the brethren. To be filled with the fullness of Christ. 
to, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Greater than all knowledge. Oh, yes. Christ. Christ. It's too late for me to change, Lord. I'm sold out to you, Lord. I can't make a change anymore, Lord. I can't go back, Lord. I can't go back, Lord. I can't go back, Lord. I belong to you, Lord. I belong to you, Lord. I can't change, Lord. I belong to you, Lord. I can't go back, Lord. I belong to you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for this ownership, Lord. Thank you for this ownership. Thank you for this ownership. I belong to you, Lord. I belong to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you so much for your blessing tonight. In Jesus' name. As every head is bowed and every eye closed. If you are here tonight, you are not a born again Christian. I want to pray with you. If you are here like that, lift up your right hand up high. You are not born again. You want me to pray for you to be born again. Lift up your right hand up high. Thank you. I see your hand. Is there anybody else? Lift it high so I can see. Thank you. Come to me if, if you've lifted your hand. Come. Don't clap. Don't clap. Don't clap. Come if you want to give your life to Jesus. God bless you. Stand here. Say this prayer. Come. Close your eyes. Come. You want to be born again. I sense there were some people here who are not Christians. If there's anybody else, come now. Quickly. Your last chance. Say this prayer with me. And everyone join me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Say it out. Today, I, I repent. And I come to Jesus. Oh God. Have mercy on me. Cleanse me, Lord. Wash me, Lord, in the blood of Jesus. From tonight, I belong to God. I belong to Jesus. And I will serve God for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I want you to go with our pastor right here. Put your hands on your head right now. Father, I pray for the anointing of the Spirit and the power of the Spirit to flow in this room right now. Receive it now in Jesus' name. A great grace is falling upon you and a grace to love God and a grace to believe in God and a grace to follow God. Take it one. Take it two. Take in a deep breath. Three. Thank you, Jesus. Four. Take it now. It's happening. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your power. Just thank him right now. Thank God right now. You have received it. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Father, thank you for your grace and your power. Power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for the blessing, Lord. Thank you for the blessing, Lord. Thank you for the blessing, Lord. Thank you for your 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 blessing. Thank you for your blessing, Lord. Thank you for your blessing. My God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, thank you for your power. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Yes.
Receive the blessing of the Lord right now. It's flowing. I know God is anointing you. God is giving you the ability to love. An ability you didn't have before. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Lift your hands and thank him right now. Thank him. Your ministry will never be the same. Never, 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 never the same. Thank you, Jesus.